What's going on guys? So I've been getting a ton of requests for this video and it's finally here. We're gonna be seeing what happens when you put a foreign disc in the Xbox Series X. So in case you haven't seen the Series X yet, here it is. Uh, pretty simplistic, you got your disc drive right here, your power button over here, and your sync button down here. I like to call it a big brick because that's what it looks like when it's in horizontal mode. Uh, but yeah, we got a bunch of games to try out. We got some random games and some DVDs and stuff. I uh, got some PlayStation games, Xbox games, Nintendo games, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Now real quick before we get started, I wanted to show you a couple controllers. Uh, this is the controller that comes with the Series X. As you can see, it looks pretty much like an Xbox One controller. The only difference is the D-pad is a little different, and it has a share button right here. Now this controller right here comes from Crazy Controllers, a company on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description, uh, but it's a pretty sweet controller that I just got, and it's, you know, it, it's called Chameleon, I think. It kind of shines in the light with some different colors, uh, like blue and purple and stuff but it's a pretty cool, cool controller has some extra grip on top and yeah it literally feels exactly the same as this controller it just doesn't have the share button and the updated d-pad but that's not a big deal so we're going to be using this uh, crazy controller today for our video and let's go ahead and get into it so as you can see right here i got my xbox series x turned on and it looks pretty much the same as the xbox one i have it all up to date and everything and yeah i'm going to start with my xbox games just because this is an xbox obviously so let's start with the uh, original Xbox games. So we got Project Gotham Racing. It says only on uh, Xbox, and they call this an Xbox, so it should work. We will see. And throw it in that slot. And so the Xbox Series X is supposed to be backwards compatible with most stuff. So I think this game will work. Oh, guess not. All right, so yep. For a list of original Xbox and Xbox 360 games that are playable, go to xbox.com slash backcompat. So I guess this one is actually not backwards compatible with the Xbox Series X, which is unfortunate. Um, I know there are some Xbox games that are backwards compatible. I'm not sure which ones, to be honest. I guess I'll have to look at that list. Um, but obviously, there, I don't think there's too many original Xbox games that are backwards compatible. Otherwise, you would think Project Gotham Racing would be. Uh, so we got Assassin's Creed 3, which I hope is backwards compatible because Assassin's Creed 3 is one of my favorite Assassin's Creed's. I know it, a lot of people gave it a lot of hate, but um, it was actually one of the first Assassin's Creed's I played, and I really liked it. Let's see if... I think this one will work. Yeah, it does. Okay, nice. So it takes up 16.4 gigs of space, which <laughs> that's like infinitely lower than the Xbox One and Xbox Series X games. It's kind of crazy to think the games are only that small. And actually, like on the original Xbox and stuff, they're, you know, even smaller than that, obviously. So basically, once you install the game, all you got to do is put the game back in there for it to recognize that you have the Xbox 360 game in there. And then it just plays it from the SSD. So it should be, I can't imagine how fast this is. There's probably just absolutely no wait times at all for this game uh, since it's a 360 game. And it's coming from this this new SSD and the, you know, the new platform. Because I'll be honest, it's already, even with Xbox Series X games, it's insanely quick. I was trying... I have, I'll go ahead and give you a sneak peek, I got 2K21 here for the Xbox, three, or not for the Xbox 360, for the Xbox Series X, and when you press play, it like immediately loads up the game, there's no waiting for it to load or anything, which is kind of crazy. So I got an Xbox One game, NBA 2K20, now I'm pretty sure like 99% of Xbox One games are compatible with the Xbox Series X, so this game should work. Now I made, an, I made another video the other day where I put an Xbox Series X game in Xbox One to see what would happen. And I made some commentary in that video about um, how I'm a little bit confused or how the nomenclature of the Xbox Series X versus the Xbox One can, can, can be confusing because there's so many games that look so similar. Like, I just think Microsoft and all the publishers made it a little confusing on which game works on which console. Uh, but yeah, here's two, 2K20. He got an update of 47 gigs, which is uh, so ridiculous when you got such a large update. When I first put in 2K21 for the Series X, it had like a 75 gig update that I had to download online. And even with my fiber speeds, it takes forever. It's just like such a large update. And like, you know, I can only hold like five games on my console. Um, but here's 2K21. This one is specifically for the Xbox Series X. And I'll show you in a second when I'm, when I'm saying that I think it's a little bit confusing of the Xbox One versus Xbox Series X. If you look at these these cases, they look almost exactly the same. But this one is for Xbox One, and it'll work on Xbox Series X too, but it's not optimized for Xbox Series X. Whereas this one is only optimized for Xbox Series X. But like, look at it. It says Xbox One and Xbox. It, I would think it would at least say Xbox Series X up top, but 
I think there was some confusion between the publishers and, and Microsoft and stuff, and it just worked out kind of weird for some games. So that was 2K21, obviously that worked, because it is an Xbox Series X game. And let's go ahead and eject the Xbox Series X disc. And we'll go ahead and get into our PlayStation games. All right, so onto the PlayStation games. First off, we got our PS1 game, which is Crash Bash. This is pretty much the PS1 game I use every time. It's a really fun PS1 game. I wish it was backwards compatible on more stuff, because I would love to play that game again. It's just annoying having to pull out my PS1, eject the disc, and try again. All right, that was quick. <laughs> it didn't even, did not even try. It just immediately knew it was not an Xbox disc, and it just spat it out. All right, interesting. Let's go ahead and pull up Great GTA Vice City and see if this will work. I still, this is kind of random, but I gotta say, I think the PlayStation 2 game cases were still the best. Like, they're super sturdy, have a spot for a memory card and everything. And, all right, eject the disc and try again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, gotta, I swear, I think Xbox or Microsoft, I think the Microsoft developers were like watching my videos and um, they knew to put in, put in an error message in for me real quick so that I'm not sitting around waiting for them to tell me something or to not even tell me anything. They must be watching my videos. All right, so let's put in Motorstorm for the PS3. This one might have a little bit more luck because it is a Blu-ray disc. So I figure the Xbox is not going to immediately sense that it's the wrong disc, which I guess I'm correct in. It is trying to do something. I don't think the Xbox Series X has like a icon on the screen when it's trying to read a disc, which is kind of unfortunate because it makes you confused as to when anything is happening. And it looks like Assassin's Creed 3 is still installing. Interesting. Um, well, <laughs> it's not doing anything, but it's... I can hear the disc tray doing a little bit of something, but obviously nothing productive because it didn't show anything on my screen. And that's another one, another random thing I want to point out about the Xbox Series X is that this disc tray is like insanely loud. I don't know if I have a broken console or what, but that thing is crazy loud. Especially when I was in, installing a game. Alright, so we got PS4 game, Last of Us Part 2. I'm actually pretty excited to play Last of Us Part 2 on the PS5 because I haven't finished that game. So I'm going to boot it up on my PS5 and hopefully get some, some graphical updates and stuff that'll make it even more pretty. But uh, let's see if we can play it on the Xbox Series X. I'm guessing probably going to be the same thing as the, the PS3, where since it is, it is a Blu-ray, it does think it's some sort of native disc, but it just can't read the data on it. You know, it's just it's, it's coded to work on a PlayStation instead of a Xbox. And yeah, same thing as the PS3. It's not actually booting anything up or giving me an error message or anything. So I guess I spoke too soon. I was talking about a minute ago when I was when I thought the Xbox guys watched my videos and purposely gave some error messages on there just for me, but I guess that's not true, unfortunately. Alright, so we got PS5 game, and you can see the difference in the PS5 games instead of the other label, it's a white label, which is kind of cool, low-key, and this game's great, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I'm assuming the same thing's probably going to happen here because this is also a Blu-ray disc, so it's probably going to try to read it up, but never going to show me anything, so I could probably sit here for hours on end and it would just still be trying to read it and <laughs> never actually do anything. I figure eventually it'll try to like, it'll pull a knife out of the disc tray and try to stab my disc, um, just because it's a PlayStation disc instead of an Xbox disc. But it hasn't happened yet. Let's go ahead and eject this thing. And yeah, Spider-Man Miles Morales for the PS5. Highly recommend. Definitely recommend getting a PS5 if you don't have it. You know, you can get an Xbox, get a PS5, get both of them. Might as well. You can get all the exclusives. All right, guys, so you try the PlayStation. Let's go ahead and try our Nintendo games now. Alright, so Nintendo, first up we got a GameCube, and I'm gonna be honest guys, I don't know if I want to put this GameCube game in my brand new Xbox Series X, because as you guys probably know, I always get worried about these small discs getting stuck, um, like these automatic disc trays, I can't see what's happening. I'm not too worried about the ones where I actually put it in the disc tray myself and like push the tray back in, because I can easily push it back out, but this automatic one, I don't know what's happening to it. And I feel like it'll get lost in there, and I think there's a manual a manual way to eject games from this, but I haven't figured that out yet, or I haven't looked it up yet. So I'm actually going to pass on the GameCube for now. Sorry, guys. 
maybe in the future when I <laughs> haven't just spent 500 bucks on a new console. Now, let's try the Wii game. So we got Super Mario Galaxy 2. Now this one should not get stuck in there. If it does, that's really unfortunate. Um, but Super Mario Galaxy 2, you can never deny the greatness of a Mario game. And to be honest, I, I would figure this would be one of those games where it immediately recognize that it's not an Xbox One disc and give me an error or something, but it's doing the same thing as before where it's just spinning and not telling me anything. Dude, that's like the that's the dirtiest way to do it is to spin the game forever and make me wait forever and never tell me anything. Like I, c I can make this video like 10 hours long and I would just be 90% of the time I'd just be waiting for the, uh, the Wii game to boot up. Alright, so we got Wii U for Nintendo Land or Nintendo Land for the Wii U, so that backwards. Dude, I haven't played I haven't booted up my Wii U in like a couple of years now. I need to do something with that and make another video on a Wii U. My guess is that it's going to do the same dirty trick here where it just tries to spin it forever and it never actually pulls anything up. Yeah, the same dirty trick. It's like, I, it's so quiet down there that I can't tell if it's actually spinning the disc or not. I think it is, but it's, it's like trying a little bit, but not too hard. <laughs> I don't know. It's, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, we only got two games here since we didn't try the GameCube. I mean, I really want to try the GameCube game, but I don't want to just destroy my Xbox Series X right when I just got it. All right, so on to the next stack. This is kind of some some random games and stuff. So we have a PC game. This game is from like, I don't know, 2001 or something. Something crazy. Lego Racers. Back when I was a kid and played, played with Legos a lot. I still play with Legos, I'm not going to lie. Uh, eject the disc and try again. All right, so... It seems like these really old formats of discs, it's it's really good at recognizing that it's not going to be for the Xbox One. But if it's like a tad bit newer, then it doesn't recognize it. Now, Sega Saturn, Daytona USA. I think this one... If I remember correctly, this one's got some like music on it, so it, it might try to play it as a CD. Yeah, it's trying to get me to... Yep, it's trying to get me to download a CD app. So let's go ahead and install this real quick. Alright, so I finally finished installing. It, it was doing some weird things. Like, it was going super slow compared to what my internet speeds are. I'm not sure what the deal was there, but it looks like it's booted up now. So let's see if it does something. Well, it's got to set things up now, of course. And hopefully it will be ready in just a second. <laughs> Alright, so here's the app. It's not showing me anything. Let me try to uh, eject this disk real quick and then put it back in. And maybe it'll show me something. Hopefully. Maybe. There we go. Oh. That was just like a bunch of static. Oh. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go. Oh, there we go. So. Yeah, the rest of them have some actual music. But that first one was just straight up. St oh, it's because of the data track. That's why. It's just like, it's not actual music. It's just random data. <laughs> and it's just, it was spewing static at me. That was a little bit scary. Freaked me out, but yeah, I guess if you wanna, you know, wanna listen to some music, you can play Daytona USA in your Xbox Series X. It's a great reason to buy one. And I actually went while we were waiting for it to install. I went and found my Dreamcast game, and so we're gonna put that in because I think this one. I'm pretty sure the Dreamcast game is treated as a, a music CD as well, and it plays some sort of at least some sort of audio. And if I remember correctly, it plays some kind of creepy audio at first, or something that hurts your ears. So hopefully it doesn't autoplay. We'll see. Um, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like we got to use Groove Music again. Oh. Huh. I guess not. So, I've definitely booted up the Dreamcast game in the past, and it actually played, like, some sort of audio. But I guess the Xbox Series X can't read it for some reason. That's interesting, because it just worked on the Sega Saturn game. All right. So, let's try some some movies now. So, first up, we got a straight-up straight up DVD, like, you know, the original DVD format. 21 Jump Street. I'm going to assume this works, but to be honest, we're so advanced in technology now where we have 4Ks, Blu-rays, and stuff. I wouldn't be too surprised if the uh, a DVD doesn't work. But I guess it is just a Blu-ray player, and Blu-rays are usually backwards compatible with DVDs, so it shouldn't be an issue, but we'll see. All right, it is installed now, so let's go ahead and eject our disc and put it back in, and we'll see if it automatically boots up the, the Blu-ray Blu player again. And hopefully it plays. I would assume so, but you never know. Might as well check. And yep, there it is. It's booting up. Got out of there pretty quickly because I don't want to, you know, there's some, those giant FBI warnings. 
on the uh, on DVDs when you boot them up. All right, so next up we got an HD DVD. <laughs> I don't expect much good to happen from this, but it's always funny to try the HD DVDs. I still think it's funny that it was actually a format that obviously did not last for very long. But uh, yeah, let's try it. Billy Madison. Stick it in. And let's see. Um, yeah, so you probably can't hear it, but it's trying to do a little bit of something in there. Obviously with not much success. And yeah, interesting. Definitely not doing anything. But it would be funny if it actually, it would be funny if the Xbox Series X actually had an HD DVD app and it worked. I wouldn't be surprised if some like third party could make an HD DVD app on the Xbox Series X and get them to work. I'm not really sure what all kind of hardware goes into reading those discs, but um, you never know. So we got Blu-ray Blu -ray, uh, disc Airplane, if I can get it out. <laughs> Airplane is it's a pretty funny movie, some dry humor from like 1980s. Um, so I'm sure most of you watching this video have never seen it. I hadn't seen it until recently. All right, so pretty quickly I booted up the Blu-ray player and here it's playing now. Same thing as before, I'm gonna exit out of it real quick because I don't wanna film a, um, a movie and get chased down by the FBI or anything. So Blu-ray works, and let's try out the 4K now. So I got Star Wars, another Steelbook. I'm a big fan of Steelbooks, gotta say. I have a lot of them. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm interested to actually, I'm gonna be playing a lot of 4K movies on either the Xbox Series X or the PS5. To be honest, I haven't looked too much into the two consoles and which one has supports the format better. I know there's one console that I think doesn't support Dolby Vision right now, which might be the Xbox Series X, and I'm a little bit confusing why. Uh, but I gotta look into that some more because I'm definitely gonna play some 4K movies. And yeah, it obviously booted up just like the other ones pretty quickly. And like before, I'm gonna get out of there pretty quickly because I don't wanna get in trouble with the FBI. All right, guys, so I've done PlayStation, we've done Xbox, we've done Nintendo, we've done some like random other stuff in DVDs, and I told you I have some surprises, so here they are. I've got a Game Boy Color game, and I've got a Nintendo 3DS game, and what I'm going to try to do here is actually try to see if these fit in the slot on the back of the console, because there is a expandable storage slot on the back of the Xbox Series X, so I'm going to see if they fit. So give me a second, I'm going to turn this console around. All right, guys, so we're looking at the back of the console now. Looks pretty standard, except there's this storage expansion back here. So I just want to see if these even fit in there. Oh, Game Boy Color games are way too big. I actually think this 3DS game might fit perfectly. Let's check it out. Wouldn't they cr that be a crazy Easter egg if you put a 3DS game in the back? Oh, it's so close. Dude, it is so close. I think a regular DS game might work. Let me try to grab a regular DS game, see if it fits. All right, we've got a regular DS game which I think is a little bit smaller than the 3DS game. Actually, it's not. For some reason, I thought 3DS games were a little bit little bit bigger, but I guess not. Um, so it's super close to fitting, but not quite. <laughs> so that didn't work out. All right, and one last surprise, which I know is kind of dumb, but I, you guys have seen this in the past. If you watch my videos, I'm going to try some money. We're just going to stick it in the slot, see if it accepts my dollar bill. Because I don't want to put my credit card info into the... Oh. I don't want to put my credit card info into the console. I just want to stick the bill in there and you can send it off to Microsoft and I'll get my 20 bucks added to my Xbox Live account but it doesn't look like it's working it goes crazy for a second like it starts pulling it in and then it figures out figures out it's not going all the way in it just like goes into overdrive um, but it only gets halfway in about and I don't see anything happening so I wonder if I can eject it Oh, nice. It actually did eject it. I think that's better than any other other console has done. So that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. That's what happens when you put a foreign disc in the Xbox Series X. I know there's going to be a lot of happy people because I've seen a lot of comments asking for this video. And, and there you have it. Um, make sure to check out the link to this controller if you're interested. It is a pretty cool looking controller and it's got a nice grip on the front. Um, again, it's by Crazy Controllers. I'll put a link in the description to Amazon. Uh, I think it's a little bit more expensive than the Xbox One controller, but I think it's worth it if you um, need some ex extra grip on the front and you like the look of this thing. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see future content for the Xbox Series X and PS5. Uh, Going to be having a lot of it. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.